and here we are live. Hi everybody, my name is Renee. I'm here in the Memorial Foundation Bill Wheeler Conference Room. Uh, we're really happy that you're joining us today for our Friday Health Tip Series. And today we're doing an interview style, so no action. You can just sit down, grab your cup of tea or coffee or your juice and listen in. And we would love for you to share this video on your own Facebook page, on your business page, with your friends. Um, you know, they're on your page or in an instant message because when you share these videos, it helps us not only get the word out about what the Memorial Foundation is helping to support here in the Yakima Valley, but also shares these great tips with other people who might want to know them also. So a really quick um, intro here in this health tip series. We are focusing on ways that we can bring you health tips to improve your life around movement, nutrition, mindfulness, purpose, belonging. And this is under the scope of the Memorial Foundation's Healthy Yakima Initiative. So when you as a donor make a donation to the Memorial Foundation under Healthy Yakima, you are helping support things like diabetes prevention education, um, helping to uh, programs that help prevent childhood obesity and more. There's a lot of things under this Healthy Yakima scope. We would love to tell you about them, especially if you are interested in, hey, from a philanthropic point of view, how can I be a part of the of the solution of helping make our community healthier? So put us put a note in the comments, send us a direct message, or you can always email us at give at memfound.org and you can find more information on our website also. And we'll put that in the comments. So let's get to the real fun stuff today. I am here on the other side of the camera with Inika Ojanin. She is awesome and you will recognize her because she's a part of our cooking, um, our plant cooking series with Elena Moon. We usually see her over at the Healthy Eats classroom. Um, but this week we're just gonna be having a chat about uh, what she does as a dietitian nutritionist and uh, what kinds of things that you can do in your daily life to, th to think about ways to improve your diet and even think about how do I even start that process. So I'm gonna toss it over to her and uh, say welcome and welcome Enika, we see you here. Well, thank you for having me, I'm you're, glad to be here. You're welcome, we're so glad you're here. So um, I know we were talking before we started about, about your title, the dietitian nutritionist, the cer certified diabetes care and education specialist. For all of us who are watching who are not medical specialty folks, can you just tell us in plain terms, what do you do? What's your work? Why do you love it? And I think before I actually just explain the plain terms, um, in terms of, I'd like to also explain the difference between a registered dietitian nutritionist and just someone that might use the title nutritionist. Yeah. Um, sometimes it might look like they have similar job functions or do similar things, but there is a difference. Um, as a registered dietitian nutritionist, we do have at least a four-year degree, so a bachelor's degree. Mine is in food science, human nutrition. Um, and then you do have to go on to an internship, and internships last anywhere from nine to 13 plus months. And then it has this big old scary um, national exam. In fact, now the education requirements are increasing. So if, if I recall correctly, next year, they're going to require a master's degree. Wow. So I'm actually really glad I got to the <laughs> I do have master credits, but um, not the full master's degree. Um, and so anyone um, can call themselves a nutritionist. Wow. So, so I could be a nutritionist. You could be a nutritionist. Wow. Your personal trainer could be a nutritionist, your chiropractor, your friend. Um, although there are nutritionists ha that have a lot of knowledge and they just don't, they didn't take that internship to pass the national exam. Um, I, I know there's some nutritionists that have a master's degree in human nutrition. So there's a lot of differences out there. And so I always encourage you to go to the nutrition expert. Um, and so that then goes in, what does my job look like in plain terms? Basically, I counsel people and meet with them either in a class setting or one-on-one -on -one, and we talk about food <laughs> but we look at their health their health goals is it preventing a disease is it managing a certain disease and how the foods that they're eating affect that condition um, and then we do a lot of a planning on okay how could we help that person make changes that they feel like they're ready to make in terms of their food choices or portions or whatever that might be. It's not uncommon. 
common that we go outside of nutrition. Part of our scope can also include like lifestyle. There are so many reasons why we eat and how we eat. And so we will start looking at that. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about physical activity, stress management, some, that some dietitians pursue other um, credentials or training so that um, they might be more skilled in something called like mindful eating um, that we might talk about a little bit later today too so that because we just realize that our food choices are so much more than just the food in front of us so wow that is that's that's kind of interesting to think that as a person seeking diet help I, I could go find somebody who has all this education all these skills and they they don't just look at what I eat but all of the pieces around what I eat because I get I, I'm I'm gathering from the work we've done Taylor before and from what you're saying what we eat is not just about what's on our plate it's also kind of about what's in our it's brain a, it's a lot of mental health and just mm -hmm. thinking of this last year yes in an interview we're going to probably come up with COVID again in this last year how much has COVID and being isolated and how that has affected people's food choices and eating habits mm -hmm. boredom eating stress eating um, availability, accessibility, all this stuff has come into play. Um, so it's changed how we eat. Um, so wow. Yes. Wow. So what made you interested in this work and, and how long, have, how long have you been doing it and has it always been at Memorial or yeah, tell us yeah. about that. So, um, I ended up going, so honestly going to college, I had no clue what I wanted to do. So I went to a college that had a variety of fields that I thought, oh, I might be able to be interested in something and find a degree. Um, and my roommate enrolled in a nutrition class. She got the textbook and I started reading the textbook and wouldn't stop reading it. And I don't know about <laughs> you, but I'm not a big reader to begin with. I don't leisure read. But then also to read a textbook and not set it down, that meant a lot. <laughs> So that was halfway into the school year. I changed majors, <laughs> declared that my major. But also what I realized when I was so interested in reading that textbook was that was kind of a natural part of growing up. Um, I guess I, I feel very fortunate that we never specifically talked about nutrition, but I felt like that was ingrained into our life. Um, I participated in sports, I was in track and field, so uh, my parents always made sure that we were feeling well for our performance, and it did show in our performance. And so just, again, kind of realizing, wow, that played an everyday role. I never really thought about it. Um, so I was like, cool, I can like go help others do this, and I can like declare that, like do that the rest of my life. Um, so I've been a registered dietitian for 12 years, wow. um, and a, a now a college certified diabetes care and education specialist. We more, we more than just educate, we also can help manage diabetes with a lot of different things. Um, but for six of those 12 years, I have actually been with Memorial all 12 and I've done a lot of different things in between. Um, so I actually started at North Star Lodge, which I dearly love. My dietitian friends are there. Um, I love that. I feel um, it's just it's a really special place. Yeah. Um, in between some of that, I worked five years at the VA clinic, the Yakima VA clinic for veterans. Um, I learned so much there, and I, I think that's where part of that really knowing that mental health and nutrition go hand in hand, because I worked back to back with the mental health team, and I so wish I still had that opportunity to do that. Um, so I learned a lot from them and from the veterans. I love serving them. Um, but I've been with Memorial throughout that whole time as well, and just positions have changed. Um, so right now I do diabetes education and support and nutrition. Wow. This, yeah. I'm so, this is so exciting. I did not know these things about you. I did not know that you did all of that. <laughs> How wonderful and, and so great to bring that other experience because oh, life is not tunnel vision, yes. right? There's all this input. Yes. Wow. And we learn from each of those experiences too. Yeah. So one of the things I was thinking about in preparing for our interview today, and I know we talked about this, is um, in our culture when we use the word diet or when we talk about the word diet, when we think about the word diet, we feel this sort of scarcity model type of sensation creeping in like, 
ooh, I'm gonna have to give up my favorite foods. I'm not gonna be able to have cheesecake or whatever it is for, maybe cheesecake is my thing. Yeah. Um, do you notice this when you're with patients and, and or, or clients? And what is are some other barriers that you notice that are really prevalent? Absolutely. Um, it's not uncommon. So again, I do individual appointments. I also lead um, classes, typically with diabetes classes. And it's not uncommon that someone will often will say, like I had the last supper before I came in for this appointment. Or they might not want to see me around Thanksgiving or Christmas time with holiday celebrations. Um, I also like specifically in classes, but also in individual points too. I say the word diet, I like to say we're not gonna use that word. I think of diet as die with a T. Restrictive, miserable, you can't wait to get off of it. <laughs> Who wants to do that? Not me. Not me. <laughs> So changes that you feel like you're ready to make that are doable, realistic, um, to help also break down those barriers. Diet mentality is really a, an all or nothing. You dive all in, super restrictive, you hate the foods you're eating, you can't eat any of the foods, and so what happens? It's kind of like the New Year's resolutions. You stop it before you even start it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and That's then right. it doesn't work and you get really frustrated and discouraged. Um, so really focusing more on small changes that still include your favorite food because even though I'm a dietitian, um, so you're here and you ask me, what have you been up to? And this morning, here you go. I made cookie dough, I made muffins, I also had red beans and rice and all this other stuff that was healthy too, but moderation. Um, <laughs> balance so in all things. It's balance in all things because that's doable. So... <laughs> That is, that's what we like to hear. So hopefully, uh, we are going to share some uh, a few tips, but uh, hopefully if that's one thing people take away from today, it's that uh, when we talk about changing our diet, it doesn't mean that we have to be miserable. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so this month is Brain Awareness Month. We talked about it last week when we were in the kitchen with Elena. And um, let's let's kind of take. So if you are watching and you didn't see that episode, go back to our Facebook page last Friday. There's a really great cooking session where we we cook some foods uh, that help us with our our brain health. Um, but what are some ways that diet impacts diseases, uh, either their brain diseases or other diseases? And how can people think about diet and disease, the relationship between those things? Absolutely. Um, I just feel our culture is very um, not looking at prevention. It's always trying to fix something with individually with medication or something else instead of our food choices. Mm -hmm. And if we really look at the research, we can see that probably at least 80% of chronic diseases could be prevented through healthy eating. 80%. 80%. Wow. Healthy wow. physical activity. So again, I like to look at the big picture. Food is a huge component, but moving our bodies, our bodies were meant to move. Good quality sleep. I mean, there's a lot of different things. When we look specifically at Alzheimer's, um, there's a lot of, we don't really know the, the full cause. There's a lot of research going out, but just looking at research that I saw, I saw anywhere from like 30 to 50% reduction in the risk for developing Alzheimer's, which is a form of dementia, more defined form, um, by following more we call the Mediterranean. Yes, they use the word diet, but it is eating more like the, the people, the cultures around the Mediterranean Sea, which if you've ever heard of the Mediterranean diet, it's a heart healthy diet. Did you know that 80% of the people that have Alzheimer's also have cardiovascular disease? Wow. There's a huge, cor huge correlation. And one of the things that they're seeing why it correlates is just like the plaques in our arteries that affect our heart health. So if we have a high bad cholesterol level, mm -hmm. that also deposits in our brain, which then can contribute to dementia, Alzheimer's, and a lot of other chronic conditions. So again, very strong correlation. That's not really cause and effect. We don't understand it all. But if we look too then at cardiovascular disease and okay, what are all the things we can change? We can't change your genes, we can't change your age, but man, we can change how we eat, how we move. Um, if we have diabetes, here I, I help people with diabetes, can we get those blood sugars in a safe range so we can prevent 
those scary things from happening. So it is a huge component. Yeah. Um, and sometimes if you're working through something like diabetes or any other disease, you sort of feel, I've, you know, there's that feeling of, I can't keep up. There's nothing I can do. I'm sort of stuck in this yeah. rut. And it, it sounds like when you, when working with, with registered dietitian nutritionists that this is this is what you do. You yeah. help people get out of the rut. I always say when they come in, they're showing up, sharing all their frustrations and things that they've had difficulty. I go, you're in the right place. <laughs> it's going to be okay. Um, and I know like Renee was talking earlier, we were saying like the barriers. There, there are a lot of barriers. And we, I can list a whole bunch of them. And one of the things I love about our virtual cooking classes, which before they are hands-on, and I do hands-on things with Elena Moon, is that is breaking down one of the huge barriers. As a registered dietitian, I can talk with you, I can educate you, I can teach you how to relabel, I can support you. It's not all education. We can problem solve, but there's nothing more meaningful than getting you into the kitchen and teaching you how the skills, because a lot of people might not have the skills or feel comfortable with mm, that. They yeah. don't know how to read a recipe or where how to purchase the ingredient. But then also it breaks down that barrier of good food doesn't taste, healthy food doesn't taste good. Um, I think I maybe shared this in some of our virtual cooking classes where I could have a class of 20 people and we prepare kale and everyone's like, oh my goodness, kale. And probably 18 of them go, oh my goodness, that wasn't so bad. <laughs> and never would I have gotten 18 out of 20 to go home, buy kale, and prepare that. Mm -hmm. Versus then coming to the class and I'm able to demonstrate that organ even puts hands on that they made it themselves. Yeah. And so that breaks down a huge barrier, and that's where I get super excited. About I it. love it. I love the excitement. So let's just keep taking it. Let's stay on the excitement train, and um, and let's give people some actionable tips, like yeah. things they can do. They get done watching this video, and now they go do a couple of things that can help them um, on their start their journey or continue their journey with yeah. a better diet. Yeah. Um, if I were to take it back one step, I always yeah. say we, not, we need to know the why. Mm. So a lot of times maybe when I'm in appointments, people are like, well, I want to know how to do this. And I, and I have to take a step, step back and say, well, why? What's the why? Because if that motivation isn't there, you're just going to get as frustrated as the last time you try. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's got to be really important. So if you come in and you say it's because my doctor brought me here and told me I need to come, it needs to be something personal to you. It, means, it has to mean a lot. And it doesn't matter what that is. But we need to like write it down and we need to post it to see like what's that why through the reminder. Yeah. So start there. The other thing I like to think of is keep it positive. Mm. Again, diet is negative. Think positive. So one of my uh, coworkers, she's retired. She has been interviewed for these health tips. Peggy Steer. Peggy Steer is watching. So <laughs> hi, Peggy. <laughs> She says, I choose to, if we start goals with I choose to, I love to, I can't wait to, versus if you start a goal as I hate this, mm -hmm. or just it's a sound, I, I can't eat any more chips, mm -hmm. um, that's really negative, that is not exciting, who wants to do that, versus I want to have a piece of fruit in, instead of that dessert three days of the week. Um, someone I worked with the, uh, this week was, I'm going to have a vegetable, and she, there's, she named off a whole bunch of vegetables that she loves. I'm going to have a vegetable for one of my snacks. <laughs> nice. And that was instead of what, something else. And so it's positive. And that's also what I think of is what do we want to have more of? Mm -hmm. um, we want to have more fruits. We want to have more vegetables. We want to have more water. And when we have more of those things, that naturally decreases the things we want to have less of versus me saying or you saying to yourself, I can't have that. And that also brings me to, I mean, I had all these examples I had from people I worked with this week. Um, one of the statements that someone made after they met with me the previous week, it was just a one week follow up and they said, they went to a social event, it was a lot harder than they thought and they said, but I was free to eat that food. Nice. So that 
was really, really um, powerful to me and also to that person because I was like, great, my message wasn't restriction and I don't want you to feel guilty when you have that food. Um, and what that did, because they felt free and didn't have that guilt or I was going to be mad at them or anything, is that they said, you know what, I just really worked at being mindful about it, having a smaller portion. Mm -hmm. So that's where I kind of early mentioned mindfulness. Yes. Sometimes it is giving yourself permission, yes, to eat that cookie dough as I made it this morning and not have guilt. <laughs> it's okay. I yes. feel sad. Yes. Um, if I were to say another nutrition, it's just really going back to real foods. We all, we keep sharing with the health tips with the cooking classes, plants, mm -hmm. but whole food, foods, real foods that aren't so ultra processed. Our body just wants the food that has come from the earth, or even if it comes from the animal, but it's not all fried and ultra processed. Can we eat the fruits, the vegetables, the whole grains, the legumes? And if you do the animal proteins, can it just be the beef, the chicken, the pork, and it's not breaded and fried, and, and maybe we don't even know what's under that <laughs> to begin with. So going sometimes back to the basics um, is also a great place to start. I love that. I, I mean, those are two, we can make a poster out of that. Like, yeah. go back, what's the why, yeah. and eat real whole foods. Michael Pollan, so powerful. Yeah. Michael Pollan has a wonderful quote, and he says, if it came from a plant, eat it. If it was made in a plant, don't. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> so again, less processed prepared foods. Yeah. Um, then we can get more nutrition bang for our buck. So That's awesome. Yeah. Well, we're coming up on the end of our, our question list here. And, uh, and of course, if you're watching and you have questions and, and we might miss you, that's okay, you might be watching this later, but write them in the comments, send us an email. We're all very accessible here. And uh, Inika, is there any last